All right, so we talked about this cent the conscious relay pathways, and now we're going to talk about the diversion and divergent and non-conscious relay pathways. So same learning objectives, it's the same PowerPoint. Um, we're just going to do the end of it. <laughs> so we talked about the dorsal column, medial lemniscus, and the spinothalamic pathway, um, where they start and end, and what type of information is transmitted. So the DCML goes from the spinal cord to the medulla onto the thalamus and this um, cerebral cortex, and it transmits light touch and conscious proprioception, discriminative touch and conscious proprioception. Spinothalamic pathway goes from the spine to the thalamus. Its name is so lovely to tell you that. And it um, transmits coarse touch, temperature information, and nociception. And those are A delta fibers. So dorsal column, medial lemniscus, those are A beta fibers. Um, in this section, we're going to talk about the spinal mesencephalic tract, spinal emotional, and spinal cerebellar tracts, um, where they start and end and what type of information is transmitted. And we know that <clears throat> information has to go to the brain, sensation has to go to the thalamus to um, have crude awareness. The three steps in the sensation experience, um, encoding the information from the periphery, um, sending it to the dorsal root ganglion, and then projecting it up to the central nervous system. Um, the difference between discriminative touch and conscious proprioception. Um, discriminative, discriminative touch um, is localized. Conscious proprioception is giving us information about where our body is in space. Um, um, we're going to talk about spinal limbic pain. We talked about spinal salamic pain in the last section, and that's the fast pain. Um, quickly localized, and um, it uh, travels in those fast uh, myelinated uh, A-delta fibers um, in the anterolateral column. And in this section, we're going to talk about spinal limbic pain and what the difference is. Um, probably you've already guessed that spinal limbic pain is the slow pain that's not well localized, and spinal pain is the fast pain that is well localized. So we're going to go, go past the slides that we've already talked about. Um, so we talked about the conscious relay pathways, and now the divergent pathways have projection neurons in the anterolateral columns as well. So remember, the spinothalamic tract had those neurons that um, ran in the anterolateral columns. The divergent pathways also have projection neurons in the anterolateral columns. So um, the example here is, if and this is from the text, of course, if someone breaks a bone in the hand, divergent nociceptive pathways provide information that contributes to automatically directing the eyes and head toward the injury. The information is not well localized, so the entire hand seems to hurt. That's that throbbing, aching pain. So the first order neuron in the divergent pathway is a small un unmyelinated or less myelinated C fiber. Um, the receptors are free nerve endings and they're sensitive to noxious heat, chemical or mechanical stimulation. Um, the first order neuron has a high threshold C fiber endings that become sensitized with repeated stimulation. So that's the thing where you stub your toe like right away, ah, oh, it hurts so much, and then it throbs for three days, and it's so sensitive you can barely touch it. So the first pain that you felt was that spinothalamic pain. A delta's right to the thalamus, you know right where it is, right where you stubbed your toe. The later on pain is those slower C fiber endings that are oversensitized with repeated stimulation. The ascending projection neurons, um, they, they um, reach, the axons of those projection neurons reach the midbrain, the um, reticular formation, and the limbic areas via three tracts in the anterolateral spinal cord. The three tracts that also run in that anterolateral column are the spinomesencephalic tract. So let's break that word down. Spino, that's obviously it starts in the spine. Mes means a mid, and encephal encephalic, encephalic means brain. So from the spine to the midbrain. 
Um, so that is, it's going from the spine to the midbrain. Spinal reticular goes from the spine to the reticular formation. And we'll talk about what that means. Spino um, emotional, it used to be called spinolimbic. It goes from the spine to the limbic areas, which is the seats, seat of our emotions, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so the tracks are parallel ascending tracks. Um, the only information in the spinolimbic or the spinoemotional tract is perceived as pain. The information in the spinomesencephalic um, tract has a different function and in the spinal reticular um, tract. So the only, um, even though that's why they call it divergent pathways, so even though pain information, no susceptive information is going up in the spinal mesencephalic and spinal reticular tracts, um, we're not using that pain to perceive conscious pain. We're doing it for other things. So the spinal mesencephalic tract, that's the one that's involved in turning your head towards the pain turning your head and neck towards the pain um, and it also has some uh, starts to have some autonomic function in the midbrain um, the spinal reticular tract the reticular activating system or reticular formation and um, we'll talk about when we talk about the midbrain but it has to do with attention and arousal so what are you paying attention to is it allowing you to sleep so this is my theory on slow pain and pain after surgery and that sort of thing and why people can't sleep after they've had surgery, um, you have that spinal reticular tract being activated by those free, those sensitized free nerve endings, and it's keeping you awake. It's keeping you alert because the brain says something's wrong. We need to, we need to be alert so we can deal with this. So, really interesting stuff, I think. Pain theory, and we'll talk way more about pain theory in in the next module. So the spinal mesencephalic tract carries no susceptive information to structures in the midbrain. And remember how we talked about ascending and descending um, pain control? This is part of the descending pain control system. So um, we're going to activate some of those um, different anti nociceptive systems, and we'll talk about those in the next module very in a lot of detail. But we have to stimulate that um, midbrain in order to um, stimulate the descending pain control system. The spinal mesencephalic tract is also involved in turning the eyes and head toward the source of noxious input and in activating descending tracts that control pain. So um, important in pain management or anti nociception. So it's not conscious, but it's important. The spinal reticular tract um, that um, ascending neurons synapse in the reticular formation. The reticular formation is a neural network in the brainstem that modulates arousal, attention, and sleep-wake cycles. So what I was saying about um, not being able to sleep after surgery makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So again, this isn't conscious. Um, this is happening in the background. The spinoemotional tract, or spinolimbic tract, it's also called, um, they transmit slow pain information to nuclei in the thalamus. Okay, it went to the thalamus. What does that mean? It means we're aware of it. Um, slow pain pathways provide information that produce automatic movements and autonomic and emotional responses to noxious, noxious, excuse me, noxious stimuli. So activity in the spinal reticular and spinal emotional tracts result in arousal, withdrawal, um, autonomic and affective responses to pain. <clears throat> affective responses to pain, that's like um, blushing or you know being red in the face, being upset, crying, <clears throat> all those different things. Those all happen from um, activity in the spinal reticular and spinal emotional tracts. So subconscious temperature information is transmitted in what they call phylogenetically older pathways, meaning they developed earlier in our evolution. They've been around for a long time. So um, other animals have them and we have them. The reticular formation, there are some nuclei of the thalamus that are called nonspecific nuclei. And nuclei are just groups of neurons that have a common function. Um, it's subcortical nuclei and in the hypothalamus. 
So the, if this temperature information doesn't reach conscious awareness, but it contributes to arousal provides if, if from the reticular formation, provides gross localization of temperature information, and contributes to autonomic regulation. So the hypothalamus is going to tell us to increase our metabolism or do something else in order to um, increase our uh, body temperature or decrease our body temperature. So um, a lot of that autonomic stuff that goes on in the background um, uses this subconscious temperature information to make adjustments. So the non-conscious relay tracks all go to the cerebellum. They, they have three, um, three functions, transmission, relay, and input. They transmit information from proprioceptors and information from activity in spinal interneurons. They relay information that's critical for adjusting movements. This is non-conscious proprioception. Um, inadequate proprioceptive input can cause ataxia because of the loss of sensory feedback that disrupts movement control. So, um, so we don't have that, that proprioceptive input, and that causes that incoordination that ataxia. So the non-conscious relay tracks, they're sending tons of information to the cerebellum for that non-conscious proprioception. So the somatosensory pathways provide information about the external world and about the musculoskeletal system. Conscious information about external objects can be provided by all four types of discriminative sensation. Medial nociception system provides information about stimuli that threaten to damage or have damaged tissue. So that's important when we go into the second half of chapter 11, um, when we start talking about nociception.